Good morning, everyone. Pete here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to look at the studio discography of Canada's second favorite power trio, Rush. The reason why I say second favorite, most people always generally pick Rush as their favorite band from Canada, their favorite power trio, right? Triumph always kind of came in second, all right? But a great band, right? Nothing wrong with being second, right? Because... The number one, the number one band, pretty, pretty good one, I think, right? Triumph also a very good band. Uh, I've been into them for a long time. I like their albums quite a bit. Very, uh, one of the things I always liked about Triumph because uh, a lot of people always compared Triumph with Rush back in the day, and very different band. Okay, very different band. I think at their heart, uh, Triumph were just a really good hard rocking band. They did some boogie. They touched on prog a little bit, not as much as Rush did. But just a uh, very good kind of mainstreamy sounding band had a lot of you know a lot of cool hits, uh, a lot of great deep hard rock and album tracks, some bluesier fare, lots of boogie, you know, it kind of did all that, you know. Rick Emmett, <clears throat> Mike Levine, Gilmore, three very talented players. Two of them sang. Okay, you know, you got Gil and Rick, both singing lead vocals. Both had very different vocal styles, which gave their music kind of a lot of different flavors and things. And of course, then when Rick left, it's kind of a void there. So uh, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to rank them from my least favorite all the way to my favorite. And you know, some of these might change a little bit here and there. Most of these are pretty decent albums. Uh, some obviously a little bit stronger than others. Uh, you know, for me, other than like maybe one or two albums, I I've never thought that. A lot of the Triumph albums, although I always loved them and I always listened to these guys, I've always been a big fan, seen them live lots of times. I, I never thought that a good majority of their albums were like slam dunk home runs from start to finish. Uh, all of them are filled with a lot of great tracks, you know, some not so great. So for me, there's a couple that are just really stand out from the rest. The others are very solid, but not quite as strong overall as those top couple. So I'm going to start off, like I said, my least favorite to my favorite. Uh, feel free to rank them in the order that you see fit, right? Remember, we hear all these differently. Okay, a lot of these have different attachments to us, so all of our lists and rankings are going to be different. No right or wrong answers, so please respect everybody's opinions. Uh, I'm going to start off with the one that I don't own. Never owned it. I've heard it numerous times, and it's not a bad album, actually. Uh, the very last thing they ever did was 1993's Edge of Excess. Of course, this was released, uh, you know, like six, about six years after uh, Surveillance, and long after Rick Emmett left the band, okay, so they actually got in a young guy named Phil X, who some of you might have heard that name. He He's actually a very prolific guy on YouTube. He does a lot of uh, guitar and product demos. He's also the current uh, lead guitar player in John Bon Jovi's band, okay? So uh, very funny guy, very, very talented player, all right? Uh, Edge of Excess, not a terrible album. Yeah, you know, kind of a product of its time. It's definitely the most metal album that Triumph ever released because released, Phil is basically, he's a metal player. Uh, and it's a very, um, you know, it's funny because I think the album itself, if it was released probably in like uh, 1988 or something like that, 89, would have done a lot better than it did, I think. But not by 93, with Alternative and Grunge kind of taking over the landscape, I think that that album was just kind of forgotten about because it's not that bad. It's like I said, it's a it's a bit heavier and more kind of that commercial metal thing going on than like uh, the more classier hard rock that the band was doing like in the early mid '80s. Uh, but I think Edge of Excess is fine for what it is. Came out a few years too late, which is a shame. Uh, and you know you got um, you got Mr. Moore singing most of the tunes, actually all the tunes on that album. So you kind of missing, for me, missing a little bit of what Rick brought to the table, his songwriting, his little bit, uh, you know, he, he would do like, uh, you know, the hard rock riffing and uh, a little bit of acoustic stuff, a little bit of jazz and blues, you know, Phil is not quite, he's a different type of player. So it's a very different flavor to that album. Some hate it, some like it. I think it's pretty good, all right? Easily my least favorite, but not too bad. All right, next up, I'm going to go with 1987 Surveillance. <clears throat> so this, of course, is the last album with Rick Emmett. All right. Not a bad album. I, For me, I think that this, um, I don't know, Triumph were kind of like, uh, to me, it seemed like they were kind of running out of ideas. It's, you know, the, the, their last couple with, uh, with Rick, kind of very commercial sounding. 
some good stuff on here. You know, Never Say Never is good. Uh, All the King's Horses is very good. You know, you got Steve Mortz guesting on guitar on a couple tracks on here. Uh, Carry on the Flame, Long Time Gone, Rock You Down. You know, there's, there's some good songs on here. Not one of my favorites, though, by then. Coming in next, we're going to go down the line here, right? <laughs> the Sport of Kings from 1986. Again, not you know, you got Tears in the Rain. Good, hooky, commercial hard rock song. All right, I saw them on this tour. Uh, you got Somebody's Out There. Very memorable song. All right. Uh, what Rules My Heart, What Else Hooked On You, Take a Stand, Play With the Fire. A good mix of catchy, accessible hard rockers, uh, as well as, you know, some songs that just aren't quite as memorable. But, uh, you know, the band's still firing out some very accessible fare, hard rock fare, drawn a lot on the concert scene, right? I think I saw them in a pretty big arena on that, you know, I'm trying to remember exactly where I saw them at. It was either Nassau Coliseum or Brendan, the old Brendan Byrne Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. So you're looking at 15, 18,000 seaters, right? So uh, doing pretty good business. All right, next up, I'm going to go with uh, 1984's Thunder 7. As you can see, so far, I'm going right down the line from their more recent uh, to, to the past, right? Uh, and this is another really strong album. I saw them on this tour as well. You know, I got the, the kick-ass Spellbound, all right? Follow Your Heart, which was always one of my favorite Triumph songs. I really dig Follow Your Heart a lot. Uh, what else? You got Time Cannon, Killing Time, Stranger in a Strange Land, Rock Out, Roll On, Cool Down. I dig it. Good mix of styles. You know, you got both uh, Rick and Gil writing different songs, singing on different songs. Good variety on here. Good mix of anthems and, you know. Things like that. All right, so next I'm going to go all the way to their debut Triumph. Some of you might have different album covers on yours, right? And the original LP had a different different uh, cover. This one goes all the way back to 1976, all right? And uh, this album, you know, I think it's kind of hit or miss. Band's finding their way. Good kind of mid-late 70s hard rock album. Uh, most well-known, I think, for... The Incredible Blinding Light Show slash Moonchild, which is probably the most proggiest thing they ever did, right? A really, really cool song, all right, that really showed off all their, their gifts as musicians, specifically Rick Emmett. Uh, you also have the good hard rock and boogie song, 24 Hours a Day, right? What else you got in here? You got Street Fighter and its reprise, you know, What's Another Day of Rock and Roll, Easy Life. You know, some good, just kind of 70s hard rockers on here. I think it's a it's a fun, energetic album that, you know, shows the arrival of a band. Still kind of figuring it all out. Next up, I'm going to go with Progressions of Power, 1980. This is my, well, my second introduction to the band. All right. I was actually kind of digging on them a year prior, but uh, when this album came out, I remember seeing this in the stores. I was like, ooh, that's a pretty cool album cover. I dig that. I remember that they played briefly on the radio, uh, I Live for the Weekend, which is a really good up-tempo, heavy party tune, right, with some blistering guitar work from uh, Rick Emmett. Uh, what else you got here? Nature, <clears throat> excuse me, Nature's Child, Take My Heart, Tear the Roof Off. All right. Tear the roof off tonight. Great. Uh, you got uh, Finger Taken, you know, Hard Road. Also want to mention that uh, Rick Emmett, usually on every album, would uh, add in like a little, brief little guitar instrumental, okay, whether it be acoustic or electric. And uh, got a very talented player. Very talented player. So that's coming in next for me. Next up, I'm going to go with Rock and Roll Machine. First album I ever bought from these guys. And here in the U.S., this had a very different album cover. It had like a cool concert shot of the band, Rick with his double neck and uh, what have you. But uh, this, I believe, was the original album cover. Okay, later also added to the CD reissue. And this is from 1977. Uh, a very strong album, I think, too. Uh, takes time kickoff track I always really like that a lot good uh, vocal by Moore on here uh, what else you got the New York City Streets parts one and two again you kind of got some proggy stuff on here right you also got uh, the city the three part city you got their take on Joe Walsh's Rocky Mountain Way which brought them a little bit of notoriety okay you got the blazing title track 
which I remember being a young kid really, really digging on that tune a lot because it's a you know, rock and roll machine, kind of almost like predates thrash. It's kind of thrashy, kind of fast and furious. Then you got that blazing speed of light solo by Rick Emmett in the middle. Very, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. So rock and roll machine next. All right, the top three. These three albums are pretty special. Uh, I've always dug Never Surrender. Okay, the you know Allied Forces from '81 had a was a tough act to follow, but I think Never Surrender, which followed shortly thereafter, uh, did a very good job. Very memorable songs on here. Arena Rock Ready, of course, you know the band Allied Forces brought the band a lot of attention, and uh, their popularity was just moving in this upward trajectory, which I think uh, Never Surrender really did a good job of uh, helping keep that alive. Right, you got you know a world of fantasy. Battle Cry all the way, too much thinking. Okay, you got some little instrumental bits on here. Uh, minor Prelude, Writing on the Wall, When the Lights Go Down. Cool rocker seeing them play that live, you know. So, I love the album cover. Saw the tour. Good album. I, I still dig it to this day. All right, coming in at number two, I'm going to go with Just a Game. I still recall listening to 101.5 WPDH Poughkeepsie back in the day. This is 1979. Hearing that song, laying on the line and thinking, ooh, I like that. That's pretty good. Good riffs in that song. It's got a great anthemic chorus, man. Just a fun, fun song. You got the up-tempo bluesy rocker American Girls. Okay, you got the title track, Just a Game. That's a very underrated song by them. Uh, moving on, Suitcase Blues, and of course, the Emotional Heartfelt Hold On. Another, probably top 10 triumph track. Great, great, memorable song. All right, a couple others on there. Good stuff. All right, obviously, you know what number one is uh, Allied Forces. My first time seeing the band live, it was, oh boy, 1981. Pretty sure. Yeah, it was, it was uh, late 1981. It was early 1982. It was either... Because sh- they, they toured... This album came out and they were already touring the U.S. Um, it was either late that year. So that, that would be either October, November, December of 81. Or very, very early 82. Okay, and I saw them at the, uh, the old Palladium Theater in New York City with Saxon opening up. I had never heard Saxon before, so I don't think it was, it might have been Saxon's first tour, or maybe their second, I think they came over here briefly before then, but uh, it was their, you know, first time in a bigger place like that, and uh, not that the Palladium was big, but, um, and it just was a, a very memorable show, I remember thinking, first of all, Saxon blew me away at how good they were, and, and then, you know, Triumph, just seeing Triumph, that was the only time I ever saw Triumph in like kind of like a smaller place like that. Uh, because then I would see them on the next tour at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center, even bigger place. And then from there on, I was seeing them at the Meadowlands or, you know, uh, Nassau Coliseum or, or what have you. And uh, But, you know, back to this album, you know, this is where everything kind of came together for the band. Of course, you know, they had uh, four albums before this, but this kind of really did it for them. I mean, I think the songwriting, the playing, the kind of the direction that they wanted to go in just all kind of came to be on this album you know starts off with fool for your love a really good heavy bluesy rocker uh you had the majestic magic power of course which was played all over the radio back then uh you had air raid then of course the title track allied forces i always kind of for me i always likened the title track allied forces to the title track from ufos uh, lights out for me they both had that kind of real kind of fast and furious heavy feel that I think really made each album and for me were each like the kind of the sleeper song from each album even though others got more notoriety but I always loved Allied Force I think it's a great rock I remember seeing you know play that live great uh, hot time in the city tonight uh, fight the good fight which is you know arguably one of Triumph's best songs ever a great song uh, Ordinary Man another fantastic song very underrated. Uh, then you had the uh, Petite Etude and Say Goodbye. Say Goodbye, another great song, which they played a lot here on the radio here in the Hudson Valley. All right, 101.5 WPDH. You would hear Say Goodbye every so often, you know. But, you know, for the most part, it was uh, Magic Power and Fight the Good Fight, which were the big, you know, big songs from this album. So, yeah, and you know, got to love that cover. And any cover that's got a flying V on it, pretty cool, right? Jeff Young, 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there you have it. So coming in at number one, we're going to go Allied Forces today. Coming in at number two, Just a Game. Coming in at number three, Never Surrender. Coming in at number four, Rock and Roll Machine. Coming in at number five, Progressions of Power. Coming in at number six, Triumph, or In the Beginning, whoever you want to call it. Number seven, Thunder Seven. <laughs> didn't plan that coming in at number eight we're gonna go to the sport of kings coming in at nine surveillance and number 10 edge of excess there you have it triumph ranking the studio albums the live album stage is pretty damn good too want to throw some props out to that this is on the web at www.cetranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time so i encourage you to list your list them in the order that you rank them your favorite to least favorite least favorite to favorite however you want to do them or maybe do your top five all right Remember, no right or wrong answer here. Okay. So, none of this. I can't believe you ranked this one above that one. Yeah, that's my ranking. Deal with it. All right. You are free to give your own ranking. There's no right or wrong. I'm not going to call yours wrong either. So, uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.